Welcome everybody to Zeta Global Radio. I am your host, Lainey Savante Walken, and super excited to be here. We are recovering. I don't even know if that's the right word. We are basking in the glory of last night's Freddie Dixon performance. Freddie is here from Europe, and if you haven't been watching the Zeta Global Radio Facebook pages and all across social media. We've been having a big stir here in the U.S. because Freddie is here and he just performed his first U.S. appearance here at our ZGR headquarters in Farmadelica Studios. So a lot of celebration, a lot of wonderful, wonderful energy and great conscious conversation. We're here to have more of it. So let me introduce you to Freddie Dixon. Hello. Hello. (laughs) How are you feeling today? You had, uh, first off, you had jet lag. You just came into the U.S. and you're performing last night for a sold out show, I might add to that. And people who've been waiting weeks to meet you, they've been watching your videos. And today they get an opportunity to learn more about you and what those songs that so are compassionately sung mean to the world and through your eyes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want to know. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to spend a whole hour. This is a special presentation. And uh, it's special because people probably don't always get the opportunity to know what someone's thinking when they're singing their hearts out. Singing. Uh, they, they can get a sense of what the songs mean. But even last night, listening to you tell the stories in between those songs... It, put in, it cast an entire new view on what I thought the songs were. But do you, is that, you want people to have their own impression and you also want them to know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, when I listen to music, you, you don't necessarily know what the artist is singing, but you take, take from it what you, you can. And I think that's the power of a great song is that different people take different things from it. It could mean one thing to one person or one thing to another. And, yeah, a universal sort of, yeah, reach, I guess. You mentioned something last night about uh, one of these being one of your older songs. And that makes me think, cause, and you also said, I've been in the music industry a long time. And I've always wondered this from the Stones who've been performing for decades and a myriad of other bands, like, what is it like for someone, and I think I've asked this to other musicians on the show, on Zeta, what is it like to be performing a song that you maybe have already so moved on from the energy or the experience or what you even wrote about, but it becomes your hit or your signature, your signature piece, but then you have to sing it for years on end because that's what people want to feel because that's how the, they may have connected into you. So what is it like to sing a song that you already know energetically you've moved on from because maybe that experience has already healed to you? Um, well, I think, yeah, some songs you can obviously tire of if you play a lot. Um, but I think the more songs I write... Um, you kind of get different things out of them for different reasons. And I think, I know the song you were talking about and I hadn't played it for ages, but I used to play it with a band. And then when I started going more independent and solo, I kind of found a new lease of life in the song and I I arranged it myself just on the guitar. And it was, yeah, vocally it made me kind of really happy because maybe it was a slightly older style that I used to sing in Um, and I found it fun incorporating it into the newer stuff and um, yeah I mean I say I've been in it a long time like (laughs) I've just turned 30 so like compared to like the Stones or something not quite there but it feels longer Um, how long when you say how long how long have you been in the music industry were you discovered or were you how how did it all come about because oh um when you say a long time have you been playing since you were a teenager um (laughs) (laughs) i think 
Yeah, well, so in the music industry, I guess, is a weird kind of phase because for me, like, I've had different points of, I guess, sort of air quotes success, but maybe I didn't feel like they were success, and I've kind of been in and out. Um, and now doing the independent thing, it's... You know, I also do a lot of cooking and I work in kitchens and stuff, and I kind of vary everything. Um, but, yeah, I've been doing music, I guess. Started doing, like, open mic nights when I was 18, and taught myself to sing, and then, yeah, went to study in Manchester in England. Um, and, yeah, and that was when I was like, right, I got all this free time. I'm going to go and play every single night in every bar. Um, and that really helped. Like, you do some funny gigs, you get shouted at, people talk over you, sound doesn't work, all that sort of stuff. But I think it's really important to go through all that. And you have to develop some thick skin for that. Yeah. Um, and then I sort of came out of university and I ended up getting signed by a big label and I did some kind of crazy gigs that yeah it's amazing for the power and then I was like singing in front of like two or three thousand people and I was like whoa okay wow <laughs> did then, they discover you at one of the places you were singing no they found I put one song out and yeah I think a guy of a guy in the music saw like liked it on Facebook I mean it was just really weird within like a, a day I was going to meet these people um, and, yeah, but then after all that happened, I kind of went went back to basics, and I was like, okay, what do I want to do? Um, and, yeah, I kind of ripped up the rule book a bit, because the immediate reaction was like, okay, well, you know, you've kind of had your time, you need to change your style, change your name, and do all that, and I was like, no, I'm not, I haven't started yet. I gotta be me, I guess now, um, and yeah, and that was a real learning curve. And now I feel, having gone through all that, I just I feel I know what I am. I could be myself on stage, and I don't have to pretend to, you know, be cool or whatever. Just be myself and play my songs. And now I'm just like, if you like it, great. If you don't, that's also fine, you know. But, yeah, I feel good to just play how I feel. So, uh, what you just mentioned reminds me of my favorite little bit in the first Katy Perry documentary. Yeah, I saw that. It was amazing. It was amazing. And I remember the publicist being interviewed, and when she was switching labels... They wanted her to be the next Avril Lavigne or the next Alanis yeah, Morissette. Yeah, like kind she, of rock, right? rock girl. And she didn't want that. She wanted to be the first Katy Perry, mm. not the second Avril or Alanis. And that really captured my heart. It's like really being clear and being in your truth and uh, authenticity. And that's what I see in you. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I think it's really cool, like, she's in, obviously, the huge worldwide pop star kind of world, but, um... We yeah. knew Freddie when, get ready, <laughs> Freddie. <laughs> I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was amazing how she, she did a sense, I guess kind of like Lady Gaga, I, th I think that era of them, those two being like, and like Taylor Swift, like, that was a real amazing sort of pop few years it's just so many like I love pop music like a, a really great pop song written um, and they just created their own their own as I think Katy Perry's like thank you for you know joining my weirdness or whatever and you can see her even though it's a huge pop production like you watch a Gaga show or a Katy Perry show it's like that's her and her like crazy imagination it's awesome with like this huge set and like fireworks coming out of i've been to her shows I and you have kids that like are five and six and yeah, you have yeah. people who are like 16 7 i mean like she she touched 
Um, she touches the hearts of many, many um, age, ages, demographics, yeah, generations. I think she's yeah, really inspiring for that age group. You know, they had this sort of like, be who you want to be. Well, that happened so. last night too. We were reflecting on that, right? We had yeah. people here in their teens, and we had people here probably in their 60s and 70s, and everybody was captivated by you. So you also carry that ability to touch many, many people. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah, I guess that's that's the aim. Like, when people say, oh, um, you know, who? what's your audience? Like, I don't really know, and I don't really care, I guess. Whoever whoever feels something, then that's great. Like, a lot of my fav my heroes, like I went to see Bob Dylan um, at the Royal Albert Hall in London. And yeah, there were obviously a lot of older people, but then there were just so many, like, people, guys and their, girls in their 20s, and you know, just Timeless. Like, yeah. I think your music's timeless. Well, we're going to take a time out and listen to our sponsors and their beautiful uh, support of this show. You're listening to Zeta Global Radio. We'll be back in a moment. Theta Healing is an energy modality that targets not only physical health issues, but also the underlying thoughts and emotions. It clears emotional roadblocks to bring us to full health and happiness. With an extensive background as a psychotherapist, spiritual coach, and Theta Healing practitioner Patty Wilson brings great empathy and insight to both her individual clients and the students she teaches to become certified Theta Healing practitioners. Right now, as a special offer exclusive to ZGR listeners, Patty is offering a reduced price of $120 a session for both telephone and in-person appointments for new clients only. That's going to run through January 31st, 2019. If you are ready to learn more about how Theta Healing can help you or your clients, please visit www.spiritualcoaching.ca or email spiritualcoach at hotmail.com today. In the depth of a spiritual ceremony, the heartbeat of the drum and shaking of the rattle bring you closer to a heightened state of awareness within. Experience the richness of nature's spirit drums. They are expertly and lovingly handcrafted with an infusion of sacred animal spirit and healing energies. Hand-stitched rawhide rattles used in sound healing, energy clearings, and journey work are filled with the powerful vibration of crystals such as amethyst, citrine, jade, and garnet. Purchase yours today by visiting naturespiritdrums.com. Zeta Global Radio listeners enjoy a special 10% discount when entering Z-E-T-A at checkout. For our international listeners, please visit the website on how you may purchase Nature Spirit drums and rattles. Welcome back to Zeta Global Radio. Lucky me, Lainey Savante Wolken here with Freddie Dixon. Hey. Hey, 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 Freddie Dixon in the house. So uh, you're becoming a household name in Southwest Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah. It's so strange and so magical. I feel like I'm in a movie here. Yeah. So that was your first U.S. performance. Yes. And one of, I predict, many in the future coming Hopefully, up. Hopefully. I would love to come back. Yeah. yeah. What, what are you seeing? What are you seeing for your immediate future? What's happening in your, on your palette, on your, on your docket? Oh, God. Um... Uh, well, I'm going to, I'm releasing a new record, um, which I, so I now live in Berlin, um, mm -hmm. and I moved from London about six months ago, and I finished the record just before I, uh, left, and, yeah, we're just getting everything together for the release, and hopefully a single will be out in a few weeks, and, and I can tell the world what the album's called and what it's about, and... Oh, we'll be following you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Um, yeah, if, it really felt like... I feel like, weirdly, this is my first record in a way, because, yeah, my debut album was... It was kind of 
to know how to explain it. I basically wrote all these songs when I was with the label and stuff, and you know, I never, I never have a bad word to say about that experience. Like it just, we weren't like quite fit. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe I didn't really know what it was, and they didn't really know what they should be or what it was. So it was very amicable. Um, but I think, yeah. So I had these songs that I'd written, and a couple after, and but they weren't they weren't made in the way that I thought they should be made. It was quite like a pop and big production. Um, so I kind of took the songs back and like reshaped them all. Um, so it was like a lot of songs from different periods of time, kind of. And I kind of did it for myself. I was like, I can't. Well, my friend was like, you can't just let these songs die. Like, you know, you've yeah, you've moved on. You're older, but smart friend, whoever that yeah. was. <laughs> well, he's he's kind of his name's John, and he's kind of been there from the beginning, and he produced Shut Us Down and that first EP. Um, and so we, yeah, we took everything back and we started from scratch again. And he was kind of like, just play me these songs, just you and the guitar, and then we'll build it around it so I am really proud of that record but it was more sort of like we need to fix things that didn't work and give the songs the sort of platform and shape and sound that they deserve and then for the second record I did everything myself in my flat in London um, just in between like at night time after work and my days off and stuff um, and I just recorded all the guitars and vocals myself, and then I got two amazing girls um, that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, this, a friend of mine called Sarah, um, and a friend called Amber, and I recorded all of their songs, uh, their singing, and I wrote the parts for them, and kind of made all these harmonies, and then found a great drummer, and went to do drum, kind of just build it around, but I feel now this was a time when I was like, I know exactly what I want and I'm going to do the recording and the kind of producing and and then when I've got it, like, then it's done and then I move on. So I kind of feel this is, yeah. So in the spiritual worlds, which a lot of people are who are listeners to ZGR, I would say that it's uh, such a great lesson how you model the clarity of vision how people can feel like when you're locked into your truth. People can feel when you're, energi- when you're energetically aligned. That's what people feel because they can feel that. You model it, you are it, and then when you bring that out in your music, it's totally received of that because people can feel when a song's off. Yeah. Um, and it, you are so uh, micro-detailed um, naturally, you do it just so just so innate. I mean, I've been watching you working with Howard and the songs that you're all collaborating on. We'll get to that later in this interview. But it's it's beautiful to watch just how you do it. Just you have this innate knowing, and um, I don't think you wobble in that way. You're just really clear. So you've had maybe some of those experiences, and they've all led you to this. Yeah, so I feel like I def- you're exactly on the right trajectory. Yeah, I definitely felt that when I was younger, I was less sure of what I wanted. And I think putting this record together myself and having to release the first album with no label or nothing or management, just you're kind of forced to learn. Yes. And I think that that helped me grow up a lot musically. I'm not saying I know everything or anything, but... I definitely feel more confident and I know what I can hear. Um, I'm working with Howard and this amazing drummer Ryan and it kind of came naturally because it was just like... The chemistry was amazing. It was like when two people come together, sometimes they think you're going to have multiple takes. Usually, isn't that the case? I mean, you guys just went to it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think... You know, I think Howard knew that he was the right guy for the job. And and then, yeah, I heard him play and I was like, yeah, this is great. Um, we don't need to, 
we just need to let him feel it and then give him a few points maybe in certain bits of the song but so I was sort of I don't know weirdly con conducting I guess yeah you were just, yeah funny photos of me flapping my arms but um <laughs> Yeah. Look for those on Instagram. <laughs> They'll then, be out there. <laughs> yeah. And um Yeah, and then we sort of agreed on where the song was gonna go and then yeah, I just left the room, left him to it and he just sort of he was kind of looking at like out into the distance at sort of nothing and just feeling it and playing it and then we were like, Oh, he's got it, done. Yeah. And it's a really cool experience. So what I loved about that is the feeling of presence, about the magic in the spontaneity of in-the-moment creation. Uh, I know some things are maybe played out and thought about and um, rehearsed, but there's also magic that's showing up that it's this immediate, let's, let's just see how it flows, and you're just allowing yeah, it. So it's that was really much. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, what we, what I really didn't want was to put too much, you know, it was my first day, I didn't want to be like, oh, let's do this, do it. like, just wanted to sort of suggest stuff, and we kind of tried a few things, and then once he knew the points of the song, we just left him to it, and I was just like, I want you to do what you feel, like, kind of follow the guidelines, I guess, but not, like, hit by hit, like, you know, express yourself. Um, right, creative license. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and there was some, you have to have that. There were some real moments where, like, there was one moment where I think Howard sort of set, accidentally set the song, like, in the wrong place, and then Ryan started drumming, and then we realised it was the wrong place, but then we were like, wait, but what he did there was really cool, even though it was... A, different point like let's leave it in yeah that's and cool i think yes something i definitely learned getting older is like there's so much so much magic in mistakes yes oh my god that was the quintessential quote i'm gonna put that there's so much magic in the mistakes <laughs> well said all right well, i think we're gonna take another break so before we do that i just really want to reiterate that shout out to ryan jarvis albuquerque new mexico 505 based extraordinary <laughs> drummer who was here in florida and working with freddie and howard here at farmadelica studios we'll be back in a moment with more with freddie dixon and we're going to get into those extraordinary videos that are all over youtube be back in a moment muscle tuners international is a proud sponsor of music to heal the earth a collection of songs encouraging planetary mindfulness, one song at a time. At MTI, we believe in impacting people in their health and wellness, one person at a time. Discover how to switch on your muscles before you begin your favorite exercise activity for greater results. Better yet, become a licensed muscle tuner specialist and learn our proprietary kinesiology techniques to help others get fitness and recovery results faster. We invite you November 4th and 6th to an Introduction to Muscle Tuning Gathering to be held in Southwest Florida at Paradise Wellness and Event Center in Bonita Springs. For more information, please visit www.muscletuners.fit. Be strong. Be confident. Be tuned. All right, so we have to touch on your music videos because... Uh, a, they're extraordinary. Thank you. The uniqueness, that's where Howard and I and our beautiful daughter Sarah were captivated. And there's a lot to be said about uh, the power of music videos and the visual. So you got your auditory, you got your music, absolutely takes you in. But then when they see your interpretation through the lens, it's a whole other world because your Shut Us Down video, of course, in the with the choir, I mean, they had me in tears. Oh, the live video, yeah. Yeah, so ta let's talk about it. Are those your creations? Do you have a whole team of people who help you come up with this? And um, how important are these to you? I mean, for that video, that was... I mean, it wasn't my idea to have the choir. Um, but 
someone suggested it and I was like, yeah, cool, I've never done that. And then, yeah, working with them was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was very scary. I was like, God, all these people have come in to sing my song. This is nuts. Wow. Um, but that was really cool. Um, and that was shot by a company called Mahogany. Um, Were you nervous? Yeah, that was kind of... I think I was confident enough as a performer then. I was getting used to, like, being the front guy, no guitar, and, yeah. So I, I think it was kind of in the middle of before I lost my way a bit. Um, it, it was in the middle of it? Yeah. I think wow. I still knew kind of what I was doing, but, but that was cool. And, yeah, and then the, I guess the music videos, um, yeah, I mean, I made, uh, I've made a lot, uh, quite a few of them, um, but yeah, I didn't really get much say, if I'm honest, with the, when I was with the label. Yeah. It kind of was done for me a bit. Wow, okay. Um, I mean, they showed me the ideas, but it was more like, pick one. And but they're really good business cards, <laughs> if you will. Like, who's Freddie Dixon? Well, go on YouTube. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've actually, I removed all those ones. <laughs> oh, they are? Oh. I removed the... All right, well, get them while you can, because I had posted them. <laughs> uh, I moved the, removed yeah. the production ones a few years ago, the the big, big ones. Um, so I didn't really feel like... I didn't really like the songs, and I didn't really feel like... You know, I showed it to my best friend once, and he was like, yeah, I just, uh, it doesn't even look like you. I don't feel that's come from you. No, it's just, mm. When you show it to someone that's... N- who knows not, you, the depth yeah, of you. Yeah, and he's not in the music world at all, and but he's got taste, and and I was like, it, w- it was really apparent. I think a lot of my friends came came clear after everything, had, the dust had settled. It was like... Mm. Well, I, I could really re- relate to that uh, in so many ways. I think our listeners, too, that when things go down, life isn't always pretty. When things kind of bring up that shadow, that dark aspect of life going on, you really get to see who's in your camp, who your true friends are, and yeah. who can really, you can really trust. Right? It's usually a, a handful. <laughs> I think, I think if they that. were... I think they were a lot more honest when I was sort of living this like pop star life. I, they kind of didn't really say much. And then I remember one friend being like, "You know, I kind of just prefer you and a guitar, like when you were 21." And I was like, mm. well, "That's interesting." And it's just so weird how I, I really feel I've become kind of full circle again because I felt like, "Okay, hang on, no, this is not." And he just like what I do is like I'm not a great guitarist or anything, but my producer John, like my right hand man guy, he was always like, yeah, but you play really well because you kind of dig in and you feel it, even though it's not really in time and your guitar's kind of out of tune, it still sounds great. Um, and yeah, I bet all the people who are fans of Freddie right now are going. Uh, who cares? We love <laughs> what, everything you're doing. It doesn't matter how perfect, because there's something perfect about the imperfection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think exactly. You, you demonstrate that, actually. Yeah, I mean, I just, I think from, and it was just obvious, okay, right, what's important for me is, uh, you know, singing and having a good song. Like, I love artists, I think, are amazing. Like, you know, if you watch Nick Cave or... Neil Young, you know, Cat Power, all these people I love, they can sit at the piano, play your song, and it blows your mind. And they can play with a massive band, and it blows your mind. And that, for me, kind of shows how great you can, you really are. Do you feel that you're there? I don't think I'm there yet. I haven't had... I'm starting a new band again, finally, in Berlin. Um... I feel like now I've had a lot of practice again playing on my own. I think I've got that down quite well, but I now really am itching to give more of a show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love doing both. But yeah, I mean, the band is kind of more fun. <laughs> Can I ask you another video question? Of course. Minimal Love. Ah, yeah. That was actually my... F- that was one of my first ever videos. First um, ever? 
Yeah, I think so. Or one of. It was either that or shut us down. But that was really cool. Like, I wasn't there, but I, the guy I worked with, you know, he came, we just met up and he was just like, let's keep it really simple. I like, this is my idea and let's just, because there's not much to the video. It's just this guy running through the field and, but it, it has so much power and I just feel he really captured it. Um, totally. That's a, the that's the word that was in my mind. But uh, not much to it, but packed with power. That's exactly what I was feeling. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was. And but I guess you know that was before I started doing the 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 big production videos. And you know, ever since you know the ones I've done more recently, working with the director, like my last video I did for a song called "State of Grace." I think that was the one I was most involved in. So um, beautiful. Yeah, so I've, a friend of a friend, um, yeah, this guy Damien, who's just, this, he's actually from, I think, Washington. He's the dancer. And, oh, um, exquisite. Exquisite, Damien. <laughs> yeah, he's phenomenal. He's, like, the most amazing guy. Um, and I met him a few times in London, and... I'd never seen him perform, but I'd watched lots of stuff, and everyone was like, God, he's unbelievable. And then I was like, okay, I always, you know, kept him in mind. I was like, well, when the right song comes along, I'll reach out. And then I sent him a demo that I did in my flat, which actually ended up being the final recording. Um, and I was like, I don't know what I want, but do you think, I know it's not like, you know, metronomic and timing or whatever, but do you think you could do something with this? And he was, he loved the song. And and then I reached out to this director who he'd come to one of my shows and said, I'd love to make a video for you. And we had an idea for a different song, um, an older song. And then I met him again. And I was like, okay, but I've got this new one and the other one's really old. And then I showed him a video, I was like, Check out this guy, like, can you imagine if he just wrote something to go with that? And then, yeah, and then Damien was in London and we, he worked with this guy, uh, this girl, a friend of his, and on the choreography. And then so me and the director went down to this, his ballet rehearsal room. Mm-hmm. Mm. And just to see that, he just put the song on and just performed this piece and we were both just like oh my god and like the power I've never seen that it's like Grace. four, I mean, four minutes Grace. and he was Oof. like dripping in sweat I was like how did these guys do this um, and then the director came up and found this amazing church in South London and we got really lucky because all the night all the light was natural yeah going through the windows and that I mean that the light that's a um plays such a strong character yeah. in the video, really. It was, yeah, I couldn't believe how it sort of came together. We were like, oh, the light, the light, we've got to shoot now. And, yeah, and he danced, and we didn't want to do a complete narrative representation of the song, but we had little hints here and there. And, yeah, I'm so proud of that. Way to go. I, I, I'm seeing and hearing a common theme in your life that... Uh, um, Things come to you. Yeah. Uh, this guy came to you, wants to have a concept for the video. Uh, Howard reached out to you. I mean, people come, <clears throat> I tell people all the time, when things are in alignment, the right timing, things come to you. It's not always the go out and do, 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 because that yeah. gets a little tiring. You've got to find the balance. And it's just acknowledging that when things are right and ready, they will come to you. And yeah. I'm just hearing over and over amazing. in your story, your life story. Not that we're getting it all in an hour, but at least we're starting to get a really good idea. It's just beautiful watching what is showing up for you. Like you're very, you're supported on multi levels. So really beautiful to see. Yeah, I guess I think it's sometimes hard to see that. And, you know, I talk to people and they're like, oh, the right people will find you. But when you're like, oh, but like, I kind of haven't got much money and I like 
I don't really know what I'm doing or like how long and I'm getting older and you kind of freak out and then but you keep going and it's these like little I call them like mini fist bumps they're kind of like yeah just little moments where you're like ah that that's why I'm still doing this yeah even though like it's like getting back to your reference point yeah even though I'm not like you know killing it successfully or whatever you have these moments where you I wrote a song about it for the new record and you have these moments where you're like okay this is why I do it whether it be one good show or one person writes you an email saying like your record means so much to me it's just like little things and then eventually the right thing will come along well no question I think last night showed it here with our American audience we had singer Molly Mason in the audience and she yells out, you're crushing it, Freddie. And the whole audience said, yeah, he is. So um, I <laughs> that, think... That was a first. I have to admit. <laughs> you don't get that in England. Yeah. Well, we're going to take another break here. Uh, so glad that you're sharing that. All right. Well, he's crushing this interview. We'll be back in a moment. Hi, Lainey Savante here, and I'd love for you to visit my new Facebook page for my private tarot and oracle session readings called Intuitive Wisdom. That's I-N, the number two, U-I-T-I-V-E, Wisdom. Conscious strategies for manifesting a more harmonious life. Don't we all want to have that? Let's see what's in the cards for you as we look at what needs to be cleared, expanded upon, and evolved. There's a lot to explore when we take a deeper look inside ourselves. All right, we are back. So here we are on this tropical island in this beautiful studio. And by the way, this is a real treat because I haven't um, been in, in this recording studio lately doing the shows. So now we're going back to the old way of doing things in a new way. And it's great looking at my husband through the glass and giving me some pointers on how things are flowing in the show. So this is cool. So speaking of the man through the glass, here you and Howard are collaborating on some new projects or some new songs. Do you want to maybe just share a little bit about what this is? Is this a segue? Is this a um, kind of expanding your repertoire? Like, Tell us a little bit about what's happening. I mean... Yeah, it was all kind of, it was so surreal, like I told you, I never, you know, I think Howard and I spoke a lot about how there's a, there's a lot a lack of trust, I think, now in the world, because there's, maybe because there's so much fear. So right. And, you know, people just reaching out, and, and then I felt when I, you know, that kind of nothing to lose attitude. When I was started doing this independently again, I, I was like, well, I really want to write songs for the people. So I was like, well, how do I do that? I haven't got, got any connections, really. So I just sent, like, 30 messages, like 30 different people or whatever. And I got, like, one response. But that girl, an artist called Bride, it's amazing, she replied, and she's now become a really good friend of mine, and that's, I ended up writing a song with her for her album. And... You know, I think the way how and I were talking, he was like, well, what's the worst that could happen? And he just sent me a message, and he's like, I love your voice. Like, do you want to do something? I was like, yeah, sure, send me some stuff. You know, if I didn't like it, I didn't have to do it. Right. Um, and, yeah, I just instantly was like, okay, this guy, he's got something. Um, and then I just came up with, like, a melody that's, like, quickly and just sent him like 30 seconds of something he was like dude it's great <laughs> um, and then I was just like <laughs> I love that the American says dude the Brit says mate <laughs> um, but yeah it was just yeah and then yeah and then he just he was sort of fleshing out the tracks and would give me more and then I'd keep writing and we send it back and forth and then the song, the first song we've done ended up being inspired by a conversation we'd had on, like, Skype. And, and yeah, and then that idea sort of came to me, and I have this title written down. I have so much, like, rubbish written down on my phone, and I just go through and see if anything fits to what I want to say. Um, and, yeah, and then 
well, I think we both became sort of quite inspired and he was like, okay, well, how's this? Like, try this, try this. And then I was just like, okay, cool. And I just put a microphone on, just see what happened, chop it up, send him the ideas and... He Voila. Would, yeah, he would just sort of put it into place. Two amazing chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm think I'm thinking about what you're saying and recently for our Music to Heal the Earth album we had Dave Abrazizi, former drummer of Pearl Jam on the show and he also was sharing about his uh collaboration with Sean Smith for some well, for a couple of the songs. And I'm just marveling at technology these days yeah. of how you all can be in multiple countries and able to create these magical songs I, I just uh, want to bring that awareness to people who wonder how the movies are made or magic is made or music here it's these days it's so different like what you're saying you're going back and forth you're in Berlin he's in Florida it's incredible to see what we can do or you all can do these days yeah I think it's a blessing and a curse yeah really. like I, I hate the sort of reliance on like if I had my way, I would I, like I don't love social media. Like that, I feel there's quite a bit of pressure just to constantly try and keep people interested. And yes, agreed. But at the same time, like I love to see what people I admire are doing, so it's kind of great. Well, people but, love to see y what you're doing because they admire you. Yeah, but I yeah. I don't know, I guess it kind of scares me. I'm like, oh, I haven't posted anything today. Or, like, I'm not doing anything interesting today. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> But then, yeah, you can chat to people. And, and it's amazing. Like, I live in another country now. And I can still just speak to my friends and speak to this dude in Florida. And it's, you feel like you... I felt like I knew him before I even arrived here. And that, so I guess it has a... A strong, positive vibe as well. Well, uh, I could say that I'm excited, and I'm sure many of us are, especially the ones you mentioned last night, as it develops to see where it goes. So, so am I. Good luck to you and Howard and, of course, Ryan on that. And um, I'm feeling to ask about sh your parents. Can we talk <laughs> okay. about them? Yeah. Are they big influences? or I, f I yeah. feel that they... Special. I don't know them, but I, I think you're very special, special Freddie's parents. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they're just incredibly supportive, and I, I, I kind of know that there's this, like, I know they want me to be happy and they want the best for me, but I know they worry because, like, I do, a lot of my friends don't do, like, no, no, no negative way or anything but they have like they have big jobs and you mean like in a suit nine to five yeah okay you know. just just so we're clarifying what, yeah. the, what you're thinking they're amazing yeah. people but we just have to do quite different things yeah. and i think my mom worries a bit that like maybe i might get sort of left behind and i've taken this different thing but i think she sees now that i'm happy and she's proud of me for like you know, I knew I had to move country to kind of move forward. Wow. Um, I knew I had to be somewhere different where I'd have a bit more time and just kind of reset and figure out what I really wanted. And I visited Berlin a lot, and that was really cool. And, yeah, they're, they're amazing. They're really, really supportive with everything I do, and they have a lot of belief, and they know that I'm not, you know, the next Ed Sheeran and with you know, I think I think he's he's great at what he does, but it's you know, it's very sort of pop mainstream world and I've explained I think they understand now that the route I'm going is more independent, slightly going around the wall if I can. Well you've kind of circled back to complete this show so perfectly because of course you're not the next Ed Sheeran because you're the next Freddie Dixon. Yeah, Straight but I mean... And what is it, full stop? Is that the terminology? <laughs> full stop, Freddie. Yeah, there's different ways of 
doing things and I think they now realise, OK, well, the major thing wasn't for him and I'm finding my own way and, yeah, it will take a little longer, but I'm sort of, yeah, as long as I'm believing and keep going, then then I think they do too. So. It's like that book you read this morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was an epic book. Epic book. <laughs> okay. um, I'm joking but all kidding aside I don't know for those of you who know of course I wrote Finn's Giant Leap um, the book originally the character was his name was Freddy and so I'm watching Freddy reading Finn's Giant Leap and we're talking about it and I'm saying Freddy and then I realized he thinks I'm talking about him but I'm realizing that I'm talking about the original character because Phineas Finn is actually Freddy but it's all about dreaming big and you know, taking that leap of faith. Yeah. But it, you do it from a place of knowing and trusting, not fearing and worrying, because... I mean, I fear and worry all the time as well. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just... I, I was kind of planting a little seed in there for you <laughs> about... Uh, that's why I was like, hey, read this book. Even though it's for children, it's really impactful for adults. It was adults. amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the illustrations, like, match. It was, yeah. But it's really about um, trusting, because we can, we can always fear... But we can also also allow the possibility of that which we want to come to us and, and just see it that as that way. And I know you see the possibilities and everyone else sees the possibilities. And you had a room of uh, people last night being in your world, being in your energy and um, captivated. I'm just seeing the social media going nuts today about how fantastic it was. And thank you to everyone who came. And yeah got a chance to see Freddie in this incredible, uh, incredible scene here in this intimate setting. And, and to top it all off, and it's a perfect way to kind of finish off this interview because it was epic. People are yelling for an encore. And what does he do? He puts down his guitar and walks over to the piano. And I don't know, the rest is history. You blew the lid off this place with your cover of Neil Young's Helpless. So where did that come from? Because that was the quintessential finale, uh, talking, speaking from a um, Neil Young fan. So uh, was that planned or was that spontaneous? <laughs> well, I think Howard suggested, like, so, oh, yeah, you can play the piano. Like, I don't play the piano. I've never played it in front of anyone. You did uh, last night. Was that your first? Yeah, that was my first time playing Whoa. in front of an audience. Oh my god! First time. Um, oh, this is a real honor. But wow. Yeah, and that's yeah. It's my favorite song of all time, and I tried playing it once, ages ago, and I was like, okay, well, if I could do this, but maybe I need the right opportunity. I mean, I've never actually. I don't think I've ever played a gig where there's been a piano there to play as well. So I I kind of wanted just to push myself and just try it. And it weirdly felt quite natural, maybe because I just loved the song. And, yeah, I was just like, come on, do there, it. There was a blanket of love in here for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything you could have done, any, nothing wrong, actually. Oh, um, it, it was all right. It was Everything was all right. That was beautiful. So Well, thank you for gracing us. We were in a state of grace last night. <laughs> Nothing could shut us down. Oh. Uh, here she goes. Uh, look at Howard. He's <laughs> laughing at me. Well, I can go on and on that, that with all this, but I really wanted to say thank you for fueling us. <laughs> oh. All right, I, I'll I, stop. I mean, I love a pun. Do Americans love puns as much well, as Well, yes. English? I mean, we can go on and on, but I just was letting you know that I know all your songs. That was kind of my way of letting you know that. Because <laughs> that I'm a fan. That is great as well. Yeah. Freddie, thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having me. And we look forward to having you back again as yes. your star continues to rise, and I know it will. Thank you. And um, we hope to have you back here on the island soon. I'd love to come back. All right. Everybody, thank you so much for listening in. Be sure and subscribe to our Zeta Continuum YouTube channel and share this loud and proud far and wide. Uh, we really appreciate you being here and supporting our show supporting our filmmakers and musicians and artists and everyone who come on here to make the world a better place. So blessings to all. Take care.